Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Skeleton City Council meeting for April 2nd, 2024. It is 6 p.m. We're going to call the meeting to order. We begin each of our meetings with an invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman Carter is going to offer our prayer this evening, and Councilman Juvance is going to lead us in the pledge. And I'll ask you to stand with me, please. May we bow. Dear Lord, thank you for letting us get here. Lord, we ask for traveling grace as we go to and from our destinations. After this meeting, Lord, we ask that you bless us to do the business of the city of Galton, decent and in order. Lord, we also ask that you keep us safe from the impending weather. In your name we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 Please face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Ms. Lyons. Ms. Kentrell's out this evening. Danielle is sitting in with us. So, Ms. Lyons, if you'd call the roll for us, please. Ms. Mayor. Vice Mayor Love is absent. Councilman Carter. Present. Councilman Fan. Here. Councilman Fennell. Here. Councilwoman George. Here. Councilman Hayes. Present. And Councilman Javance. Present. Mayor, we have a quorum. Thank you so much. You have two sets of minutes before you this evening, one from March 5th and those from March 19th. Move to approve. Motion by Councilwoman George. Second. Second by Councilman Fennell. Are there any additions or corrections requested? Seeing none, all in favor of approving both sets of minutes, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Okay, they are unanimously approved. We'll move now to public recognition on agenda-related items. This is the time of the meeting that you may speak to any item that is on the agenda. I'd also um, remind you that there is a public hearing this evening related to the banks of Block 4. If that's what you wish to speak to, you may wait to you may wish to wait until the public hearing, which is the first item on the agenda. If there's another item that's on the agenda you have interest in, you do need to speak on that at this time. And then if you have an item that's not on the agenda, you will have a period at the end of the meeting that you can speak to that. But right now, public hearing on agenda-related items is now open. You may come forward if you wish to speak. Okay, seeing no one, I'll declare public recognition on agenda-related items closed. And we will move now to Mayor's comments. I have just a few things to tell you about that are upcoming. I do want to compliment Councilman Carter and the First Baptist Church for an outstanding Easter egg extravaganza. What would you call it? Extravaganza. Extravaganza. Well, I'd say it was pretty extravagant. Um, and uh, a lot of people, well done. And uh, How many did you count the eggs? I think we had a little over 15,000. <laughs> there were some busy children <laughs> and a lot, of, a lot of candy wrappers. <laughs> but well done, and thank you for doing that. Um, uh, coming up this week, this um, Friday, is the Ball State's Women Empowering Education Luncheon at Our Lady of the Lake in Hendersonville. Breakfast of the American Legion happens on Saturday. Um, um, Oh, very importantly, this Saturday is the all-day cleanup for all of Sumner County, and Gallatin always knocks out of the park. I'd encourage you to um, bring your friends, bring your children, bring your neighbors, and let's pick up. Um, we will congregate at Public Works. Is that our meeting spot, Mr. Henschel? And you can sign up online for that if you're interested in participating, but I bet if you just show up, they won't turn you away either. We have several streets with the goal of cleaning up, and we will get them done on this Saturday and pick up more trash than any other city in Sumner County. There is... Uh, sorry, I'm going through these things. Spring plant sale coming up at the Gallatin Farmer's Market on the 13th of April. Um... There is a rabies vaccine clinic at Douglas Chapel Church happening also on the 13th, and mindfulness in nature happening at Bledsoe Creek State Park. So some good opportunities on that Saturday. Um, and then the Master Gardener plant sale is coming up the next weekend on the 19th, on the 19th and 20th over at the uh, UT Extension Building on Hartsville Pike. And I think that's all for events right now. And. We will move on now to the regular agenda. And the first item on the agenda is public hearing on Ordinance 02402-8 and Councilman Fan to introduce that, please. Thank you, Mayor. This is an ordinance of the City of Gallatin, Sumner County, Tennessee, zoning 235.51, plus or minus 
acres not zoned to the R8 PRD. Medium density residential plant, residential district, and rezoning 58.88 plus or minus acres from the R40 low density residential district to P to R8 PRD. Medium density residential plan, residential development district with a preliminary master development plan for the banks at Lock 4, located east of Lock 4 Road and north of Peach Valley Road, authorizing the revision to be indicated on the official zoning atlas, repealing conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date, zone 2023-0082, and this is a public hearing. So the public hearing is now open. You may come forward to speak. We ask that you give us your name and your address for the record. Um, I would ask that the audience remain quiet. It's helpful if we don't have applause or laughter or cheering. And um, ask that you keep your comments succinct as you can, just because there may be a lot of people wishing to speak. But with that, the public hearing is now open. You may come forward. As one person is speaking, the next person can certainly come up to do so, too, so that we're not waiting on people. Hello, uh, my name is James Van Vondren. I reside at 901 Aqua Drive, Gallatin. My home is located on the corner of Lock 4 and Aqua Drive. I've lived in Gallatin since uh, July of uh, 2022 and a Tennessee resident since January of 2012. I've been attending Gallatin City Council meetings as regularly as possible to better understand how our city government works. Over the past many months, I've grown more and more disheartened with what I've witnessed by the majority of those supposedly serving and representing the constituents in the respective districts. Obviously, I'm concerned with the development of our beautiful city, in particular, the banks at Lock 4. I'm alarmed at how quickly this project has flowed through our city government for approval, receiving an expedited rubber stamp through the whole process. I need to reiterate some of the obvious issues, I call them red flags, again, as it appears most, if not all, issues have fallen on deaf ears in the past. Increased traffic burden. An estimated 6,500 additional trips. Let's put that in perspective. What does that mean? Most traffic, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's another 541 vehicles on the road per hour on lock four. That road is not made for that or developed for that. Um, the traffic, I, I, if you look at that road, there's no shoulders. It causes major safety issues in, in the event of emergency. Uh, with no shoulders, you can't pull over when there's a fire truck coming down the road. There's no place to go. You can't pull over if there's other emergency vehicles going down that road. Um, they're not able to safely yield the right of way. Traffic study that was previously done was not done at peak time. It was done in the winter when that marina isn't open. And trust me, there's a lot of traffic that flows in and out of that marina. Our school system is already stretched to its limits. Sumner County officials have already publicly voiced their displeasure with the apparent uncontrolled growth in Gallatin, indicating they are not able to afford this type of expansion. Ultimately, this uncontrolled and poorly thought out city planning falls on me and all the other taxpayers. Our water and sewer systems can't absorb the additional homes to be built at the banks of Lock 4. Our water system is old, as evidenced by the many water main breaks in the past few years, one directly in front of my home and others up and down Lock 4. City workers said the lines are old. They're, they are failing. Uh, so putting an additional burden on them doesn't make a lot of sense. Most residents moved here for the small town atmosphere as they enjoy the rural character of our city. When the master plan for the city was done a few years ago, the acreage where the banks are locked for, uh, for plans, on uh, plans on residing was to be rural with no more than two homes per acre. Uh, the rural character emulates the surrounding area as most of the smallest lots are at least one acre. Rezoning for this medium density makes no sense at all and is definitely not wanted by your constituents. 
Currently, our police and fire services are stretched their limits adding another almost 700 homes severely impact our fire and police protection. Again, this added burden is put on me and the rest of the taxpayers in Gallatin and Sumner County because of our poor planning. Other issues surfacing bring light to the poor vetting of this developer contractor, D.R. Horton. It is simple to gain information with today's technology to learn about the ridiculous number of lawsuits they have been party to. Here are just a few lawsuits uh, and there are hundreds. Anderson County, Tennessee homeowners win $22 million in damages due to negligence and breach of implied warranty. D.R. Horton settles with residents of an entire South Carolina neighborhood, 220 homeowners, for $16.1 million due to foundational siding, framing, doors, and window issues. There's a Facebook page dedicated to shoddy construction of D.R. Horton. There's a TikTok page dedicated to lawsuits against D.R. Horton. This developer contractor has a very poor history of construction defects, workmanship, and warranty problems. Other issues having negative impact on this development and contractor is their financial status. Their stock was uh, took down, not downgraded, but took a negative uh, dive yesterday of $5.59 per share and were indicated by many uh, financial consultants to underperform. When a publicly owned company underperforms, they are forced to correct the issue. They've got shareholders. Shareholders don't want to lose money. When a publicly owned company performs, they are forced to correct the issue. In this case, they need to sell more homes or cut corners to reduce the build costs, but still sell homes at the same price or higher. Thus, shoddy construction outcomes with the banks of Lock 4 being a multi-year project. Will they be around to finish or just leave the mess they already had started? Mayor and council, uh, council members, we, not just I, the residents of Gallatin, Tennessee, urge you to start listening to your constituents. Get out of your offices and, to, and start talking to people in your districts to hear firsthand what is important to us. It is not poorly planned and overdeveloped Gallatin. It has always been my understanding our government officials represent the people they serve and then the city, county, or state in which they serve. It is not a matter of serving, serving for your own special interest or where the money resides. The people you serve expect you to be financially and morally responsible and to listen to the majority voice. And unlike previous comments made by city council members, that only those that come to meetings to voice their opposing opinions are the minority, I'd suggest you put your feet on the ground and get out and listen to all the citizens of the city rather than approving another poorly vetted and planned project. Thank you for your time. We, the people of Gallatin, expect and demand you do the right thing and not allow this project to go any further at this time. Thank you. Carolyn Seagraff, 1066 Lakeshore Drive. Uh, I've come up several times over the past year and talked about all the different issues in which he just so eloquently reviewed for you. Uh, I think in my experience here, there's been several very prudent, very compelling reasons why this is not the best decision for this part of Gallatin. Again, we talked about if you had a nice road that would take you right out to some of your major roads like 386, 109, but as we know, Lot 4 and Peach Valley, those roads are just not made for that. I think if the city wanted to build a nice road, maybe cutting through all the way down to the uh, Clear Lake and get you over onto 386 and avoid all this traffic and increase on Lot 4 and Peach Valley, there might be a possibility that it could be somewhat managed. But even if it were, I think going back to the two, two houses per acre is not an unreasonable request at this point. I mean, what, what difference does it make at this point? It give a little more space, maintain some of the integrity of the area in which we're in. You know, again, if you drive up, you go through Nichols Circle, you drive around that area, you don't see those types of developments. However, I will say, I recently drove down there and there is a development that's been made on the left, I think it's Cherokee, 
uh, around that. There's another a big development on the right. There's a bunch of townhouses that have been built right off of Lot 4. That's just going to compound it when you add all these additional houses. And I wasn't even aware that those had been approved and, and moved forward. But um, this is obviously going to impact even more. I'm on Lakeshore. We pull out. We have Peninsula. We have Belvedere. You have Morris. You have Harris all coming off onto Lot 4 before you get to Lakeshore. Lakeshore is also on a curve. So, I mean, I have problems now during the busy times the, uh, of the day trying to get out, and I just can't imagine how that's going to get any better, not just for me, but for all those other people. And I do feel bad for the folks on Peninsula and Belvedere because in the mornings when I, will, when I do go out, and see, everyone cuts through there. You know, they have an enormous amount of traffic now, and that's not really fair to their little windy roads either. And I know that's another problem. I think also that I've been coming with all these other folks, and I have yet to hear anybody stand up here and be in support of it. So again, as the council decides that they're doing what the citizens want, I don't hear anyone coming up telling you that this is what they want. So I, and I don't know why they wouldn't show up if they were really in support of this. I think the only people who are going to benefit from this are going to be construction workers, real estate agents, and other people who are going to have some benefit from the building and construction, and then the long term, the tax for the city. I think all those things are going to benefit, but it's not benefiting the city. It's not improving the uh, aesthetics of Gallatin. It's not improving the roads. It's not doing anything else for anyone else except, you know, people who will benefit from that construction and, and again, uh, the building. So I guess... That's kind of my point. I, again, I believe the gentleman before me had much better talking points than I do. Mine is just personal in terms of what I see happening. So the, the best I could ask right now is to keep the density down to no more than two houses per acre, at least, is that much of a compromise. Thank you. Good evening, folks. Thank you guys for your attention. Am I, I'm a little loud, sorry. Uh, thank you guys for your attention tonight. I appreciate you guys. Um, I would be a little more put together, but I just got off work. Uh, I've lived down at, uh, off Lock 4. Name and address, uh, please. Yes, ma'am. I'm working on it. Um, I've lived down off Lock 4 on 929 Aqua Drive for, since I was 12. My name's Caden Ray. And um, I've kind of grown up around that area. I've hung out down at Lock 4 Park and the little boat ramp. Address, uh, please. 929 Aqua Drive. Um, for like a long time now. Uh, and I like to go down there and hang out with my friends. And it's a beautiful area down there. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, I was driving. I was headed home from work on my break. And um, there was a box truck making a delivery. And like a gentleman before me said, there's no shoulder to pull off on the side of. So I was approaching with caution, and I slowed down. And there was a really sweet... Um, it's a really sweet, sweet lady in front of me. She was going through a, a rough few days. She unfortunately had just lost her mother. And uh, she just didn't see me coming in her, her left lane mirror as I went to pass. And she had decided to kind of go around the truck the same time that I did. And I threw myself over into the ditch. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. Nobody was harmed. Completely got really blessed, very lucky. Um, but I was thinking, man, and we're going to bring in all this new traffic. And trying to get home around 5 or 6 o'clock is really hard anyways, man. And so then I was thinking with my accident and everything, I was like, man, it's going to really stink if there's all this development going on. And, you know, if every house has an average of two cars, I mean, we're talking about a substantial increase in the kind of traffic we're going to see on Lock 4, which has already gotten worse since I've lived there. And not to mention there's a gentleman before me that actually spoke really well. Kudos to that guy. And, uh, <laughs> but he's, he mentioned how all daddies in the, in the boat... Uh, Boat Marina attract a lot of traffic in the summertime, which, which I can definitely attest to. Sometimes it's actually a little crazy. <laughs> but um, I don't want to take up anybody's time tonight, but I just don't think that it's going to be good for the environment. I don't think it's going to be good for the neighbors of Lock 4. I'd like to think I'm pretty close with a lot of my neighbors, and I don't think anybody's really for it. I don't think really, really anybody wants it. Um, and like a, a couple people have said before me, I just want to represent my community. Um, and yeah, I mean, to keep it, to keep it short, again, um, I see a lot of deer and a lot of foxes around Lock 4. There's a lot of wildlife that we're lucky to have. I'd be worried that we drive them away, too. It's just a beautiful, serene area. But, um, but yeah, that's just the opinion of an 18-year-old. Thank you, guys. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. 
My name is Elsa Nine, and my husband and I have lived at 233 Peach Valley Point for over 20 years now. And we are so fortunate to be in this neighborhood, in this area. Um, I, I'm thrilled that the younger people are getting involved in government because they need to. So kudos to you. <laughs> um, for the first time in over 20 years, I actually feel unsafe in my neighborhood. Pulling out of our cul-de-sac onto our two little country road, Peach Valley Road. It's a two-lane country road. Let's get real. And pulling out, people are flying up Peach Valley Road. It's 30 miles an hour. We can't see what's coming or going either way with the hills the way they are. And it never used to be a problem until, honestly, recently with all of the building going down at the end of Lock 4 in Peach Valley with all of those condos and everything. Just that traffic alone has increased our area and our traffic. I can't imagine what it would be like with the initially proposed with all of the condos and the homes and all of the 600 and however many units there were as I was reading this. But I understand progress. I understand that's a giant piece of land that's empty and something needs to go there, of course. But we're just asking that be reasonable that this is our neighborhood, to just cram as many units into that area as possible. It's, it's not only, it's just not fair, it's not moral, it's, it's, it's just the wrong thing to do. When did the right thing to do become what we can get away with versus if that was your neighborhood, would you want that? And my son, or my daughter and son-in-law, they bought the home next to us in Peach Valley Point. And so I have a two-year-old grandson and a four-month-old grandson. And they're pulling out of this cul-de-sac. If we've got traffic, um, just really quick, my son-in-law did call the city, and we thought maybe we can get speed bumps put in Peach Valley Road. And the process to do that is crazy. You have to get a ton of signatures, and it's... There's like, basically for us, there's 10 homes and residences that are impacted directly coming out of our cul-de-sac. So we couldn't get, you know, that many signatures. It's just, it, you have to jump through hoops. So this is our forum to let you know as our elected representatives, just please think about if this was your neighborhood. And we're not saying don't build anything, but just please, please be reasonable. Two homes per acre. That's reasonable. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Karen Bookout, 1006 Quailwood Cove. Definition of integrity, the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles that you refuse to change, acting ethically and transparently in all business dealings, prioritizing doing the right thing over personal gain, an unimpaired condition, soundness, quality or state of being complete or undivided. The Institute of Government at the University of Georgia stated in a 2007 study, maintaining, public, <clears throat> maintaining trust in the integrity of government is essential to the success of democratic government. The public expects its elected officials and public employees to conduct themselves with integrity while working for the public good. Two of you, Councilman Hayes, Councilman Fennell, told your constituents you would vote no on this development. However, you reneged and voted yes. Councilman, Councilwoman George. Ma'am, please don't reference any individuals. Okay, well, a Thank quote you. from an interview that a councilwoman did. With the growth that we're having in this area, we need good builders and good developments. Courts in numerous states, including South Carolina, North Carolina, Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia, Ohio, and pending cases in Tennessee would d disagree, having ordered D.R. Horton to pay tens of millions of dollars in restitution for shoddy construction, mold growth in homes, falling stones fa facades, and inadequately designed and installed stormwater systems. In addition, Councilwoman, you stated, we have differences of opinion on our council and in our city, and somehow it seems like the ones who are against something seem to have the largest voice. That doesn't mean it's the correct voice, end quote. Are you suggesting your constituents are wrong? Ma'am, please keep the comments to the council. The integrity of the sensitive ecosystem found on the green farm in the surrounding area, including Old Hickory Lake, and its tributaries are listed in the 2023 known exceptional Tennessee waters and outstanding national waters in the TDEC Division of Water Resources reports, specifically citing Ambostoma barbari, streamside salamander. 
Their survey conducted by Spectrum of the Green Farm indicated a healthy breeding and larva population of this state endangered species. The wetlands and streams on this property are exceptional as represented by the presence of watercress, which also indicates the presence of springs. The, the destruction of these small streams disrupts breeding seasons for these species. Blasting and fracturing of small seasonal channels damages substrates, which act as a sponge. Wider natural buffers have a greater capacity to absorb runoff as opposed to minimal prescribed buffers and developments. This is not just about a salamander. This is ultimately about protecting our waterways and water resources for our future. The Tennessee Clean Water Act states the following. Recognizing that the waters of Tennessee are the property of the state and are held in public trust for the use of the people of the state, it is declared to be the public policy of Tennessee that the people of Tennessee, as beneficiaries of this trust, have a right to unpolluted waters. In the exercise of its public trust over the waters of the state, the government of Tennessee has an obligation to take all prudent steps to secure, protect, and preserve this right. This city of Gallatin should be obligated to do so as well. Additionally, the city has an obligation to secure, protect, and preserve our way of life. The blasting required to clear the land for development will destroy the ecosystem. Yes, mitigation will be proposed. Dior Horton will pay for fines for habitat destruction and it won't hurt them. But the integrity of these habitats and their ability to absorb stormwater cannot be mitigated back into existence. A particular council person regularly posts pictures of pristine beaches, I'm assuming in Florida. I stood right here in front of you describing the devastation I witnessed due to poor planning and destruction of environmentally sensitive areas in Florida. Yet you have the nerve, the nerve to vote yes. On your Facebook page, a photo of traffic congested highways with the caption, this is not life. And below it, a photo of aquamarine waves rolling toward a beautiful beach with the caption, this is. This is an insult to your constituents who express their concerns about traffic issues in town. Council members, it is not too late to vote no. Those of, with the, with the, those of us with the largest voices did not settle here for the this is not life, way of life. We are here for this is the life that each of you are voting to destroy. Each of you will move on, retire, perhaps to Florida, leaving a ruined gallatin in your wake. And if I might just add, this is not my opinion. I verify all of my information with USGS, USGS Hydrological Surveys, and TDEC. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jean Myers. I live at 213 Faraway Hills Drive. Unlike most of the people here, I live a little distance away from the Lock 4 area, but this does affect me. Um, I really dislike having to come up here and address the council with my concerns. The last time I did that, I ended up inheriting 300 plus new neighbors. I'm here today because I'm tired, I'm frustrated, I'm downright angry. I'm tired of watching all the open spaces in Gallatin turn into massive developments in which houses sit as close to each other as five feet. I'm frustrated because it's never ending and it's always on the agenda for your meetings. I'm angry because our council refuses to listen to their constituents when they continue to voice their outrage over this unfettered development. But have no doubt about this, I'm also motivated. For too long, I've sat back and done nothing, just hoping and praying that someone will put a stop to this lunacy. Unfortunately, all the hoping and praying has done nothing. So now I stand before you letting you know that I am now engaged. You have my full attention now. And as a voting member of this city, you've been put on notice. The first meeting I went to hit close to home, both literally and figuratively. I live near a new development that hasn't been built yet, but will be, that added over 300 new residences, making my low density neighborhood a medium density. We talked about everything. We talked about traffic. And we talked about how it to the would. council, please. We talked about everything. We talked about how it would affect traffic, how it would affect schools, how it would affect our communities in general. It made no difference. The one thing that struck me as my neighbors were coming and speaking was that they didn't say things like, we don't want more houses or stop all this building. They were mostly concerned with the fact that our infrastructure can't handle that many new residences. And they completely overruled city ordinances that is specific to how many square feet 
each town home can sit on. And that was overruled. So, okay, growth happens, we know that, and people sell off farmland, but why do we have to pack in as many houses as possible? Why can't we have larger lots with fewer houses? Our roads can barely handle the amount of traffic we currently have. Is your solution to just see what happens? Thank God I could use my defensive driving skills I learned in New York. Honestly, because the truth of the matter is, just trying to make a left onto 31 during rush hour is a true test of my fortitude. Then of course, there are the schools to consider as well. I'm not just a resident, I'm an educator. I work in the schools, I am a teacher. The implications as an educator here in Sumner County, I know full well those implications over overcrowded schools and the impact it has on student achievement. We can barely staff our schools as is. And we pay our teachers significantly less than the county right next to us. So let's go ahead and pack more students into the classrooms and see what that does. I'm not sure if you believe that this is not an us problem, it's a them problem, but honestly, this is a we problem. And all of you sitting up in your dais are creating this problem. And I want to personally thank one council member, because I just learned I'm not allowed to address anybody specifically, but he'll know who he is, okay. for keeping up the good fight against all adversity. I believe he's the only member who actually speaks for his constituents and listens to what they have to say. He continually fights against this unsustainable growth and keeps us in the loop about agendas and implications. Again, thank you. I have just one question that I have to pose to this council. From what I could see, Gallatin is for sale to the highest bidder. But who is benefiting from this? This is not rhetorical. Can anybody answer this for me? Ma'am, this is a public hearing. Not, I understand that, but I also wanted you to know it's not rhetorical. This is not just something for you to consider. Thank you. I would ask you all to um, help us maintain some decorum and try to refrain from being quite so loud. Ma'am. I'm Don Crittenden. I live at 878 Farrington Way in Gallatin. And I am here to speak in favor of this project. I'm in favor of it because this project and the people who are developing it are not content to just simply move in and, as they've been accused of doing, try to build on what is already there without making new changes to make things work. I think you, some of you, if you've been listening, know that they've already agreed to spend $3 million on off-site developments that will not necessarily help their development. They're going to enlarge our sewage system, our water system. They're going to, uh, they're going to work on the park across the road, and by speaking of parks, Nearly half of this project will be a park. That means I can go out there at any time and, and enjoy a walk without having to go to Bledsoe Creek or some other place. So what we have here is a project that is, is not simply trying to take advantage or trying to squeeze more postage stamps into postage stamps, but rather a, a project that is trying to make this city better. Yes, this city will grow. And we can pretend it won't, but it is going to. And so what we want to do is, uh, frankly, is embrace growth. Embrace it and use it to our advantage to make it, make sure that growth fits our standards. Whatever has happened elsewhere may or may not affect us. I think it's been demonstrated to the codes of this city the people who work in these offices are fairly competent people who will oversee this project and make sure that some of the things that may have happened <laughs> elsewhere do not happen here. 
I've driven, or I've used Lot 4 Road, Hancock, and I know that that's a bit of a problem. And uh, at the same time, that intersection is going to be repaired, as are two other intersections, again, because the people who are working on this project are civic-minded, and not necessarily, as, as I think they've been accused of being, simply out for a dollar. Um, I don't have a whole lot more to say to that, but I challenge anyone who believes that this city will not grow. It is a friendly city. I believe we were no good for that. And we might as well be friendly, but we also take care of ourselves. We look at our, our infrastructure, and yes, we ask those who would come and, and work with us that they serve us. They serve the city. And I believe Gallatin is a, is a wonderful city, and I believe it will continue to be so. And the people who are governing it are doing their best to make that happen. Thank you very much. There we go. Uh, Danny Clawson. I'm with D.R. Horton. I uh, office at 819 Seven Oaks Boulevard in Smyrna, Tennessee. So I am the purchaser of Banks of uh, Block 4. And I'm here today just really to let you guys know who we are, okay? We are Deer Horton. We are America's largest builder, okay? We've closed a million over a million homes in the last 45 years, okay? We celebrated that last year. That's quite an accomplishment, okay? We're also locals, okay? Um, we may be the largest builder, but we are local. We've got eight employees that live right here in Gallatin, okay? They work here, okay? They grew up here, okay? Their families shop where you guys shop. They church where you church, okay? They wear this shirt, and they wear it proud every day because we believe in doing the right thing. As much as you hear different today, okay, we believe in doing the right thing. Okay, when you close 94,000 homes a year, okay, especially if you go to TikTok and the wide world web, okay, you're going to hear differences of opinion. Okay, I would ask any of you to go up to Nexus. It's right at the road. We build there currently. Okay, uh, we've got a lot of great customers there. Okay, I think uh, it's probably going to go into a little bit more detail later, but you guys have some customer service forms. That's raw data straight from our customers, okay? And I invite you, go out there and knock on the door. Ask them, talk to them, okay? Figure out who we are, okay? Because we're locals. We live here. We've closed over 5,000 homes here in Middle Tennessee over the last 10 years, okay? Um, we believe in doing the right thing, and we always have. We're not perfect. I'm not saying that. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to make bad hires, okay? And we're going to have to fix some stuff. We know that, but we're going to stand behind our product, okay? Everyone who comes to work for me, they get this card right here. And I'm reading this because I want you all to know who we are, because we've got a lot of people painting pictures out here that are not true, okay? Right here, we, the Music uh, City team, are committed to strive for customer loyalty through values that start with integrity, to be diligent in our disciplines, holding each other accountable, communicate effectively in ways that set us apart from our competition while serving our team and the new home needs in the Nashville area. Okay, there's some key words we put in here. Integrity is one of them. And I, I thank the lady before me by bringing up integrity. Okay? She may question y'all's integrity, but that's her opinion. Okay? Just like she's going to question my integrity. She doesn't know me. None of the people in there know me. They don't know my heart. They don't know Don Horton. Okay? We're not D.R. Horton as in Dr. Horton like a lot of people think we are. Okay? That stands for Donald Ray Horton, and he's a good man. And he teaches us from the top down to care for our family, which is our employees, and to treat our customers like family, okay? So integrity, accountability, serving. Serving means a lot to us, okay? If you look at all, ask any of my managers, I believe in them being servant leaders. I don't believe in us being at the top of an org chart preaching down our employees, okay? We move to the bottom of the org chart and we help, we serve, and we put up, okay? If they don't want this community to be here for growth or you know too much traffic, then I ask them to stand tight on that. But don't stand tight on my throat and my employee's throat and locals that live here and try to tear us down when they don't know us, okay? Go ask our customers. You read some of their comments on that form, 
but we do the right thing. If you look at what we value on the back, doing what's right and fair all the time, every time, okay? We made this in a wallet size because I want every one of my employees to put this in their wallet. And if they have any doubt of how to handle a situation, I want them to pull this out and I want them to read it, okay? Because we do the right thing, okay? People are going to sit up here. They're going to tell you about Big Bad D.R. Horton. We are the largest builder in the country. Factual information, not being arrogant. That's who we are, okay? You can't do that from stepping on people. Are we going to have issues? Yes, we are going to have issues, okay? I have over 100 employees here in Middle Tennessee that we take care of and we feed, okay? We've got over, th I mean, thousands of trade partners right here in Middle Tennessee that we take care of and we give jobs to, okay? And if there's traffic, I trust that you guys are going to help mitigate that and help us make decisions to do the right thing there. If there's sewer issues, water issues, I know you're going to hold us accountable to do the right thing there, okay? But we're local, and we're going to do the right thing. And if anyone in this room wants to talk to me afterwards, I'll be out in the lobby. So if we want to go deeper into this. But bottom line is, I wanted you all to know who we are, okay? So we're locals. We care about people. We care about doing the right thing all the time, every time. And I thank you all for holding this meeting. And I hate that you guys are taking the beating you are. But thank you all for being here tonight. Good evening, Mayor Brown, council members, staff. My name is Vicki Hendrick, 560 Peach Valley Road, 1145 Lot 4 Road. Um, quote, the house is shaking. The house is really shaking. It feels like an earthquake. Sporadic construction blasts rattled residents in Germantown, Salemtown, and Nolensville. As of September 2023, Department, Tennessee Department of Commerce and Insurance is involved in cases where there's been structural damage. I rode out to visit a friend on Hartsville Pike last week and observed on Airport Road blasting signs. The signs say, blasting zone. Warning, one minute series of long whistles, five minutes prior to blast. Blast signal, series of short whistles prior to the shot. One long blast after the shot, all clear. I pulled onto the side of the road to take a photo of this sign and observe all the rock in that area. I can tell you with certainty, certainty that when they start blasting on lock four area, they're gonna run into a very long process of blasting rock. I know that land very well as it adjoins the Butler property, all rock. Matter of fact, when we were exploring the viability of planting crops, I contacted two local farmers who came and said our equipment would be destroyed trying to harvest crops due to the rocky nature of this ground. Blasting blocked the freshwater pond on our property and rendered it stagnant with no water flow. And this was from blasting just to install sewer on Peach Valley Road. No one on Peach Valley Road enjoyed one minute of blasting. Then while riding down Woods Ferry Road, I saw more blasting signs. I wonder how many residents of Fairview Plantation would enjoy that much blasting in their neighborhood. This will be, a, be scary for my older neighbors, not to mention structural damage to people's homes. Our home place was built in 1908. It has a cellar that still has jars of food my son's mother, a grandmother, canned that we're, we want to hang on to because it reminds of, us of her. I don't want that destroyed. Um, next, I want to address um, harassment by developers. Just today, I received a call at 1 o'clock asking if I was interested in selling at 560 Peach Valley Road. I wasn't nice. I guess they want the domino effect. When one sells, they seek more land. Tennessee has 95 counties, and as of 2020, four years ago, Sumner County was number six on the list of fasting, fastest growing counties. For over two years and leading up to November vote to annex, we were looked straight in the face by two council members saying over and over that they would not vote for any more than two residences per acre. How do we have faith that the people we elect have our best interest at heart if they make empty promises like this? I'm no math genius, but 2.29 per acre, let's see, approximately 285 acres, plus or minus, 140 cut out for green space, that leaves 145. Divide 695 by 145, and that's about five homes per acre. Wow. So, in an article in Williamson County, residents said, we are on track to lose two million acres of farmland in Tennessee this year. She states, 
how do we eat? I state, how do we breathe? Recently, one council member stated we had time to address traffic and safety concerns. I've lived here for 30 years in this area and I've seen nothing. Our voices seem to fall on deaf ears. Deaf ears. I was gonna say last, I will say lastly this, but I got a caveat. Radion is a gas found in the ground around limestone, shale, and granite. Without getting into radion, radion, radon and radium and soil, let's just say the words cancer, because radon is the number two leading cause of cancer just under smoking. Leukemia, radon. Our, you can look at the map of Tennessee, how high the radon is in Middle Tennessee. When you blast large amounts of limestone, we will have radon leaking into the air, streams, and infecting our wildlife. The EPA and WHO both warn of this gas and the effects on humans, wildlife, and homes. My caveat, one of the offsite developments is a greenway on Peach Valley and Lock 4, which is on both sides of the Butler land. So, I mean, how many people want to lose farmland to a greenway? And I brought a list here one night that, well, not a list, it was a printout of all the negative comments from the Town Creek Greenway where people said they were scared to walk their dogs because of glass, trash, chicken bones, motorcycles coming up on the sidewalk, the, the greenway. So that's uh, plus not knowing who's walking in your neighborhood. Bragging, D.R. Horton bragging about who they were. That's fine. Um, and how many homes they build per year. And I can only imagine how many millions or billions or trillions of dollars they're worth with all the land that they just said they develop and sell homes. Why is this area so important? I mean, take some of that money and build a park. We've talked about that before. It's their money and they do what they want to. Thank you for all your attention. Hello, my name is Tammy Chambers and I live here in Gallatin and my address is 2103 Albatross Way, Gallatin, Tennessee. Um, I'm gonna read from this, so y'all bear with me. Um, my eyesight's not as good as it used to be. Okay, so I joined DR Horton um, the local division, and I am the sales agent at Nexus South, the 55-plus active adult community. I started selling new homes, representing builders as early as 2007, one being Goodall Homes of 10 years. I had the opportunity to sell DR Horton Homes as a general agent, representing <coughs> buyers prior to my employment as a new homes sales agent. As a past president of Sumner Association of Realtor, a current board member of the Sales and Marketing Council of the Middle Tennessee Home Builders Association, I have a vested interest in working for a builder that provides and builds homes that deliver quality as well as taking care of their customers. I have spent 17 years building my reputation on integrity and representing quality builders. So I would not jeopardize that, and I certainly wouldn't be up here tonight speaking in front of you, asking you for this project to move forward. The reason being I believe in this project is because I have seen what has happened in Gallatin over my 17 years in this area. I have seen the medical come from Vanderbilt to St. Thomas. I have seen the things as far as the, um, the Civic Center. Um, all the things that you have voted for, I have seen how they have it, the quality of our communities and how I have people that come into my homes every day in a 55 active adult community telling me why they are moving to Gallatin, Tennessee. They're coming to Gallatin, Tennessee because we are providing the things that they want. We are providing the American dream. We are providing home ownership, and we have to continue to provide these homes for these people, for the people of not only that are coming here, but are in our city. I thank you for all that you have done to continue to allow this growth. I embrace it, and I ask you to continue to bring it on. Thank you. Uh, my name is Melissa Bryant. 
Uh, I live here in Gallatin, 1130 Lynn Cove Court. I am a transplant. I can from Bowling Green, Kentucky, but nevertheless, I am a transplant. When I chose to make my home in Gallatin, um, I had options, I had choices. I looked all over the Nashville market and I chose Gallatin because of why I think a lot of people choose Gallatin, Old Hickory Lake. I'm a water baby, I'm a water girl, I wanted to be close to the lake, which is why I'm sure a lot of people that live here stay here or continue to move here. Um, and if you don't believe me, you can stalk my Facebook because I spent the whole last summer at the Gallatin Marina at Aw Daddy's on the paddleboard, doing paddleboard yoga with Miss Megan. It's all over my Facebook. Um, so fell in love with the area, fell in love with the lake. Yes, Gallatin is where I wanna be. So with that being said, um, growth is inevitable. I think we've, we've heard that a million times and we know that, but I would be ecstatic that people wanna live here and wanna be here and be close to the lake. If I knew Lock 4 was coming up before I bought my house, I would have waited because obviously who doesn't wanna be that close to the lake and the marina and all the things that we love to do. On another note, um, I am in the Nexus community. I am in a D.R. Horton home. I bought a D.R. Horton home. I love my home. If anybody, I'm trying not to get too emotional here, but um, I really don't like the fact that people are bringing up negative things when you don't have personal knowledge of them. We can search reviews on Lennar, on Ryan, any other builder in the area, you're gonna find negative reviews. How many of you go online and post a positive review about anything? I mean, maybe every now and then we'll see that, but you, we know people love to stir the pot and talk about negative stuff and just get the attention off of that. I can tell you right now, pretty sure that the Nashville market is not using the trades out of Alabama or any other state where they're using local trades. I invite anybody to come over to my house, check out my house. It's not a shoddy house. I love my home. Love it. 1130 Lynn Cove Court. Drive by, knock on my door, come on in. I'll give you a beer, I'll give you a bottle of water, whatever you want. Um, and to address radon, <laughs> I, born and raised Bowling Green, Kentucky. Bowling Green, Kentucky, for those of you that do not know, was built on a cave system. Mammoth Cave, largest cave system in the area. Radon is so high in most homes in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Let me tell you what D.R. Horton does. Passive radon system in every single home they build. Whether you need it or not, it's there. Um, they stand behind their product. Um, that company is like a family. You couldn't ask for a better group of people. So again, if anybody has any questions about the build of D.R. Horton, 1130 Lynn Cove Court, come on by. I'd love to show you my house and how much I love it. So you could love it too. But um, that's all I have. I appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. My name is Will Pate, 111 Spencer Springs, Gallatin, Tennessee. I have lived here since August 15th, 1989. I was born right down the road, room 302 at Sumner Regional. So I've seen the change. I pride myself with my family that has been here for over 100 years. My family also runs the second longest business in this city. They've done it for lived since 1937. So I've been here, I've seen the change. I've seen the change what has come. I've been here when Walmart was brought out. Lord knows we knew it all happened during that process, but hey, it's here. But change is good. Change brings new people to the town. Change brings new schools. Change brings teachers, athletes, academics, different, different prospects that come into that. And building with DR Horton, I've been with him for two years. I've been in this construction process as a superintendent, project manager, builder for 11 years since I graduated college. Went to college for a four-year degree in construction management. I've built with other builders. I have a tenure of over 800 houses that I've built in my 11 years. I closed the door on my DR Horton homes and I'm proud of them. And I'm not just saying that because I work with them, but I've worked with two other builders. Some of those houses, they built here in Gallatin. Am I happy? Of looking at those houses, no. But I can tell each individual in the city of Gallatin as a person who is not a transplant, as a person who was born and raised here, as a person who chipped his tooth on Peninsula Drive, if you wanna talk about traffic, I can talk about it. I've been here and I understand coming from 
a lot of people will. You've been here for the longest. You know, you're, you're, uh, you know, your your roots are here. Why are you supporting this? Because it's good growth. It's something that I feed my family. I feed, you know, there's a lot of families that, that are that are here that we work for. The other builder that is with me in Nexus, he is from here. He couldn't make it tonight, unfortunately, but I ask everybody, and me being the builder, Councilman, Councilwoman, Mayor, if y'all would like to come out to Nexus and tour some of my houses under construction that I truly pride myself on, that the building inspector here in the city of Gallatin, which building in more than 15 municipalities throughout Middle Tennessee in my 11 years, Gallatin is by far one of the toughest. And I would put it up against the city of Brentwood, city of Franklin, and Williamson County. The building inspector here brought in a state auditor to our neighborhood in Nexus, audited every one of our lots, just D.R. Horton, DR Horton only, not Ryan, not David Weekly. He found one problem, one problem and that was tightening a bolt on a UFER rod which connects to the grounding apparatus that goes into the footing of our slabs. One problem. And we have about 115 houses that we're building out there. I do understand the growth. I do understand the problems that it brings, but it also brings good growth, and that's what the trust we put in you guys on figuring out the roads and stuff like that too. We do trust that in you. So just as a 35-year-old, uh, a uh, member of this city who's born and raised here. I fully support it, and this is good growth. Thank you. Hi, I'm Allison Garrett Turner. I live at 1289 Lot 4 Road. Uh, the residence that I grew up in was born and raised, well, across the driveway, but moved across the driveway to current residence. Our family's been on the end of that road since the 1950s, so not quite as long as some because like this farm and many others, they're generational farms. They've been there for years and years. And development is inevitable. I'm a civil engineer. I do land development. That's expected. So please um, excuse me. I may ramble a bit. I was supposed to be at a soccer game today, but clearly that didn't occur. So um, I sent out an email to you guys just highlighting some of my concerns. Development's going to happen. Unfortunately, and I've lived in Nashville for years. I developed in Franklin, Brentwood, all of Williams County, many areas, Knoxville. Um, I don't think Gallatin does a great job of it. Our planning is, I don't, it's nothing against our planners. It's our planning. It's been there for so many years. We haven't adapted to this rapid growth that we have. And it takes time and it's a process. And I saw it happen in Franklin and, um, you know, because they're not that much different than us. But 20 years ago, they were us. And so it takes a lot of long-range planning and investment. And I worry that we don't have the wherewithal or the fortitude to invest in our infrastructure. So therefore, we are kind of falling behind. Williamson County invested in their school system. Sumner County is not going to invest in our school system. I mean, Liberty Creek is technically in Gallatin, but how many Gallatin students actually attend that school? 1,700 of them are at Gallatin High School, that's for sure, uh, where my two children attend and where my younger will attend in two years. Um, schools are a problem. Infrastructure is a problem. This particular property, it's, I mean, it's been sitting there. It is a crown jewel waiting for development, and that's great but the density is too high. Plan Gallatin said it would be low, it would be keep its rural character. This is not rural character. These are high density lots. They may be 2.2 something units per acre, but they're 50 feet wide. That's not maintaining our character. Um, that's, we've got lots of green space, that's great. I'd be much more okay with this if it was accessing Clear Lake Meadows like it should be. It shouldn't be accessing Lot 4 Road or Peach Valley unless you're going to do a substantial upgrade to those roads. And the location of this access point on, at Aqua Drive is dangerous. I mean, it already does not meet the qualifications, the site distance qualifications for its location. But sure, we'll go ahead and we'll put up some garish lights to warn people to slow down on Lot 4 Road. Why am I slowing down? That, that's my road. Why am I slowing down for them? That is not a good location for that entrance. And 
the poor people that live at Aqua Drive, do they want those lights in their face every night? It's bad enough that the uh, river put up these ginormous red lights, and I can see from my house all the way across on the other side on, you know, at Mount Juliet. But, so I can't imagine having those kind of street lights flashing outside my window for those poor neighbors at Aqua Drive. That's not a solution. A solution is to upgrade the road. DR Horton's a large company. Trust me, they have money. They can afford to do the improvements that are necessary to, if they want this property badly enough. And Lock 4 Road, at every point, right now it functions pretty well until you, you know, except in the mornings when you're trying to get through Hancock or when you're trying to turn left out of Nichols Lane to go back down Lock 4 after dropping off my kids. Um, so Clear Lake Meadows was set up and was supposed to be set up to access this property, the Kirkpatrick property. I know this because my father was on this council at that time and complained about the location of Clear Lake Meadows then. So now we've got a development there with all those townhouses with Clear Lake Meadows set up to come through these properties. It needs to happen. That road needs to go through and it needs to not be a minor road. It needs to be a collector road because that needs to be the primary access. Um, since the Highway 100 has had, gone to four lanes, it's like a floodgate has opened and the cars just stream in from 109, coming up 109, and now they're taking the, the new by, the bypass in front of Publix. I mean, that's great. At least they're not running through town. That's, that's an improvement. So the cars will be there. They will come, and direct access to 109 would be critical for this development and make it much more palatable for all the neighbors that surround it. I mean, I can tolerate the light, the development. I would ask that maybe we work on some low lighting and some working, I, mean, I kind of light my lightning bugs out of my house, but they don't do well with up lights on houses and big tall street lights. And let's try to keep the lighting down if we can. That's all another conversation. Uh, but so I'd like to compare just a little bit this development with many of the others that are near this size. Sorry, I'm getting dry mouth. It's always dry in here. Um, Kennesaw, Patterson Farms, Fairview, Carrollton, they are all on major arterial roads. Most, and all of them have a commercial component nearby. This one is sitting on two collector roads that are substandard for any collector you'll ever see. I mean, we're thankful for the widening of Lockful Road. I mean, at least it's not quite as narrow as it used to be. I think we have full 12-foot lanes. But Foxland is only a quarter mile from National Pike, and major improvements <coughs> were done to that road to make it more usable. And there's commercial right there next to it. This is not what we're talking about here. I'm all for high development. I love high development. I love, like, walkable neighborhoods and jam it as tight and as packed as you can in the urban core. That's where it belongs or townhomes sitting right off of, you know, right next to Patterson Farms Publix. I'm not gonna complain, I like Publix. It's nice, it's really close to my house. It's great. We needed an alternative. I love Kroger, but I hit Publix too. And it's nice to have some of that development coming out towards 109. This property just does not need to send that much traffic onto Lockport Road and Peach Valley. If you haven't driven those roads, please go out there before your next vote. Please drive those roads. Drive them at 7.30 in the morning, 7.15 7.30. See what it's like. Uh, no offense to uh, Pereira Farms, but their trucks are coming through Peach Valley and Lock 4 at that intersection frequently. They're usually a little earlier, so they don't interfere with much, but these are not great roads. So, D.R. Horton is a builder. I've worked with lots of builders. They can do infrastructure improvements. They can partner with the city to do infrastructure improvements. And some possible turn roundabout at Nichols Lane and further down the road at Hancock is not what we need. We need significant roadway improvements if this is what's going to happen. Why not just put that money into making Clear Lake Meadows work as it should and as it was designed? That road is sitting there and if we don't have them do it, it's not going to happen. We're going to pay for it. We're already going to pay for part of it now because the townhomes didn't extend it all the way through. 
that road needs to be extended. It needs to be extended to this property, and it needs to be their primary entrance. There also needs to be a connection over to Robbie Lane. Robbie Lane's supposed to connect all the way down to Cumberland Place North. Those connections help build the infrastructure to accommodate this. I'm all for good growth. Growth is going to happen. Good growth is just going to happen. Who would have expected it this hard this fast? But here we are. But we also have to partner with Sumner County to get a school system in place for our kids. I want my kids at my school. They go to the school I went to, the school my dad went to. I don't, it was Central High School, I think, when my grandmother would have been coming along. So, I mean, we've been there since the beginning. We've been in this town since the beginning. Before it was a town, growth happens. So please, take the time to get what you need out of them to make this work. The Kirkpatrick property is ready to go. If, you know, there's one piece of property sitting in there that just needs to be ant taken in, talked to, have a conversation, make that road happen. It doesn't need to be primary entrance off of Lock 4 Road, not because I drive by there every day, but because it's a terrible location and because it's not a good road. And the people that live on Lock 4 that before you get to Aqua Drive, the poor Amazon guy has nowhere to park. He can't get in their driveways because they're too steep from putting a curb in to try and prevent the rain getting into their garages. I mean, things have changed over time. As that road widened, that's made their situation that much worse. Push it over to the side a little bit. I'm doing a project in Lebanon right now where I'm moving Coles Ferry Pike. And that's a partnership with the city and the two developers on either side of the road. These things can be done and you can force their hand and it needs to happen. I'm not gonna to speak to the fact that it's development. There's gonna be plenty of people here that don't want land development. I get that. I make my living off of land development too. It's you know, a double-edged sword. But I'm controlled only by what you ask me to do. I'm the conduit between the developer and you. So in order to make those things work together for the benefit of our community, you have to do your job, and that is to ask for as much as you can get from them because that's the only way it's gonna happen. Thank you. Richard Bransford, uh, 404 Joanne Street, formerly of Lock 4 Road. <laughs> um, guys, you're doing a good job, best you can. Uh, I was a council member and a, and a county commissioner where we came from. Uh, I came down here and married one of your Gallican girls and said, if you'll go home with me, and say, we'll get ready to retire, we'll come back to Gallatin. So I had to make true on that. But one of the things that really irritates me from time to time is people with shooting off the hip and misconceptions. Now, people are saying that we're losing all of our farmland. Nobody went and looked. I went over to USDA uh, and checked to see what they actually done. We have a uh, census every five years, two, uh, 2017, 2022, and I think the next one is 2027. Now, between 2017 and 2022, our farm size went down from 113 <laughs> acres to 112 acres. Our acreage was 169,900, went to 140 which actually brings us to a, about a 12% decrease in park. Now that covers all of Sumner County, Hendersonville, Millersville, Goodlisville, White House, Portland, West Mullen, Gallatin, and I'll probably lift somebody out. But that's a large area. And somebody said we was on track to uh, lose a million acres of farmland. Sumner County is a pretty good sized county. Davidson County is pretty well built out. And that's kind of hard to believe because we only lost like 20,000 acres in that period of time. So that's a little bit of information there. So we're not losing all of our farmland. And if you look on that paper I give you, I think we done uh, 1.8 million bushels of grain and over 30 something thousand head of cattle. I think we're still doing pretty good. Thank you. 
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Todd Alexander, 217 Strange Circle. And I work daily on Lock 4 Road. Rural character. Traffic concerns. Safety concerns are things that I hope you're hearing tonight. I hope that you are listening to the constituents, especially those of you that represent District 1, 2, and 3 that are directly impacted the most by this development. I hope you're hearing the neighbors. I've tried to keep up with addresses of the speakers. You can tell the neighbors from other interested parties. I hope that you have pulled out and dusted off the traffic study from this project. The concerns that it left on Lock 4 and Peach Valley Road. I too saw the local media report quoting a council member that said this project won't be built overnight. We'll have time to address traffic and safety concerns. I hope our plan for the city of Gallatin is not to pass this project and then see what happens. That did not work well for the federal government when they tried it. 12% farmland decrease doesn't sound bad unless you put eight years of that together. And then you've lost 96%. I want to ask you, don't say things in the coming meetings where this will be discussed. Don't say things like, no one wants to see farmland disappear, and then turn around and cast a vote to increase the density of projects like this. Gracious and growing Gallatin, we can do better than destroying the rural character of this area. Thank you. Hello, Mary Simpson, 1275 Lot 4 Road, Gallatin. I'm here again to speak against the banks of proposed banks of Lot 4 project. I know I've spoken several times about the absolute traffic nightmare that this development will bring to Lot 4 Road, our little two-lane road with no shoulders, which was noted as being inadequate back in 2007. Um, adding 6,500 additional trips a day now in 2024 with absolutely no improvements. How can that be adequate today? I just don't understand. The traffic solutions have, which have been proposed are minimal at best, with some coming late into the um, completion of the development. I've also spoken several times about the quality, or should I say lack of quality of the development, and the quality reputation or lack of quality reputation of the builder. One would actually think that a de development named the, lock, the Banks of Lock 4 would be a super nice development, since it's a development located on land right across the street from the Banks of Old Hickory Lake, one of Gallatin's most precious assets. What a misnomer. The development would be average at best and will not fit the existing neighborhood, which consists of houses on one acre or more lots. And the developer has also had several lawsuits brought against them for poor quality, poor workmanship, and faulty construction. The pro proposed development will slam in 695 units on 148 acres, giving a true density of 4.69 houses per acre, although we know with the PDP that it averages out to be 2.36 units per acre using the entire 295 acres. Several of you have indicated in the past that you would not vote for this development with a density over two units per acre. However, your votes to date don't reflect your earlier convictions. I've also spoken several times about the placement of the main entrance of this development. Placing it directly across from Aqua Drive on top of a blind hill is just unfathomable. It's just not logical. Unaddressed lack of planning for the infrastructure to support these big developments is also a major concern. The roads, schools, water, electricity, sewer, city services, trash services, etc. And I know you're probably all very tired of hearing us speak about our concerns surrounding this development. However, these are real concerns to me and all the residents surrounding this proposed development. Again, we're not against development as we know the Greens have the right to sell their land. However, we are against this particular development for the above reasons. It just doesn't fit our existing neighborhood. Like the Nexus development is right off of uh, 109. I mean, it's got good road access. This doesn't. Please search your hearts and let your common sense prevail and do the right thing for Gallatin and its residents. Vote no for the banks of Lot 4. Also um, ran across an article back when Gallatin's mayor was elected for her third term. Can I say that? 
<laughs> this is a good quote. She was quoted in a November 9th, 2022 Gallatin News article saying that we have a lot of challenges ahead of us with growth being the biggest challenge that we face. I agree with that totally. It wasn't too many years ago that we were desperate for investment in our community. Now that dynamic has changed. It's like we're the most popular girl in school dance, which means that we can be choosy with who we dance with. In other words, we can be selective about the type of growth and investments that we want to bring to Gallatin. The article goes on quoting the mayor saying, we are successful because of our people. We have been able to achieve a winning combination by blending the talents and treasures of people who have recently moved to our city with the spirit and heart of our core community of lifelong residents. They will be the ones who ultimately decide how best to preserve our green spaces and our historic structures, and they will be the ones who perpetuate the warm, friendly feel of Gallatin." End quote. Uh, Mayor Brown and City Council, why aren't we being but more choosy about who we dance with? Haven't you heard the expression, dance with the one who brung you? <laughs> Have you totally forgotten about the lifelong residents? We're here to tell you that building more and more apartments and big developments like the Banks of Lot 4 is definitely not perpetuating the warm, friendly feel of Gallatin. One of our councilmen recently asked Mr. Harrison, can I say his name? He was representing the development, the Banks of Lot 4 development. Anyway, the council um, person asked, Mr. Harrison, will this development be nice? Mr. Harrison answered that, yes, it will be real nice, and it will be built using all local builders. Based on that exchange at a public city council meeting, we all have Mr. Harrison's word that this development will be nice and that it will be built using all local builders. I'm just hoping that Mr. Harrison honors his word and that if his word means more to him than some of your own words spoken at city council meetings mean to some of you. At this point in time, I'm guessing that all of our friends and neighbors were right. We're just wasting our breath and our time coming before you to protest the Banks of Lot 4 development. However, attending the City Council and Planning Commission meetings has been very enlightening, to say the least. Seeing our elected officials in action in, in person has been quite an experience, very eye-opening, to be sure. This experience of sharing our dismay and disgust of this development hasn't been all negative, though. It's brought us in contact with and has drawn us closer to some of our wonderful neighbors. Also understand that it won't be many more years before our current landfill will be full and that our area will be in need of a new landfill location. Another infrastructure issue that will be accelerated by all this crazy growth in our city. So I'm grasping for something positive since I'm normally, normally an optimistic person. If this subpar average high density development goes in, at least me and my neighbors can all be thankfully assured that this property won't become Gallatin, Middle Tennessee's new landfill, which is actually my way of saying that the Banks of Lot 4 is only one step above living close to a landfill. Thank you. <laughs> I want to clarify that that quote was not mine, and I told the reporter, I mean, what you said was my quote, but when I repeated it to the newspaper, I said, this is something that John Pereer had said, and I thought it was lovely, and I was repeating it. About the dance part, yeah. <laughs>my thoughts on the banks at Lot 4. Um, I always have to never follow Mary up because she's awesome. Um, I'm so proud of how many people showed up tonight. Um, even the developer has turned out a lot of people. And, but I think that at the end of the day, it all comes down to something that Allison talked about. And this was one of the very first things I ever talked about. And it all comes down to the density and the traffic. I think my understanding is when Plan Gallatin was started, years ago, um, the Clear Lake Meadows, when these neighborhoods started going through, has always talked about that there'd be Clear Lake Meadows. You'd be Clear Lake Meadows, you could be able to get through that. And this is before I got involved in this, but that was my understanding. So we don't have the Clear Lake Meadows. And so I guess there's a quote that says, a mark of wisdom is refusing to let the fear of admitting you were wrong stop you from getting it right. So I'm gonna ask you to get it right when you vote. There are now new facts to consider after last night's planning commission. I'm sure you're all aware of this. The neighboring Kirkpatrick farm next to the Green Farm has requested annexation. This is on the planning commission agenda on April 22nd and will be sent to be sent forward to y'all. So this isn't a surprise, but if it's developed in a similar manner to banks of Lot 4, then you need to consider thousands of more vehicle trips a day added to the traffic burden the traffic study for Banks of Lot 4 
It didn't include these additional, ve additional vehicles in their calculations. How could a traffic engineer be expected to include what ifs, such as the development of the Kirkpatrick land in their study? My understanding is that a study focuses on the impact their project will have on an area, and then they add in some possible variables, such as surrounding development. My understanding is that without an agreement to sell at this point by one remaining landowner, the Clear Lake Meadow extension is not possible. So a collector road to 109 can't be a re reality unless eminent domain is exercised, which I know that I've heard y'all say that you would not do. I don't know if you would or not. So then what happens is the collector roads that Kirkpatrick talks about, they dump onto Woods Ferry, Peach Valley, I don't know, all the roads that already have too much traffic. So all these vehicles will be added to an area already heavily congested if the banks a lot for passes with the density it's requesting. So we're respectfully asking the members of this body to make a subjective decision, looking at the big picture. If all of these types of questions could simply be answered by a computer model, we would not need council members like yourself to make these kind of decisions. In light of this new development with the Kirkpatrick Farm, we would respectfully ask you to rethink your vote. We do need you, and we're asking for your leadership in dialing this back before it's too late. I want to end by thanking Councilman Jovance and Councilmember Love for their unwavering support. Councilman Jovance has been responsive and involved as his constituents have voiced their concerns, and we appreciate this so much. Councilmember Love has the perfect last name. It's the love she has for Gallatin is obvious in everything she does. Thank you, and I appreciate your time tonight listening and your service to our community. My name is Mary Janung. I live at 1100 Lock 4 Road. I'm here tonight because I received a letter from CSDG in the mail, and it was a attention to my... Um, the fact that I'm going to be affected by this development and I needed to come because there was a public hearing. I took that very seriously. Um, I've had a lot of um, concern. As you all know, I've been here multiple times. I've, I feel like I've been doing this for two years. So I want to take you on a journey. Um, I, I really appreciate you not looking at your phones while I'm talking. I used to be a professor in college and that irritated me. But anyway, so I digress. Anyway, um, I want to take you on a journey. Uh, you, I was looking and listening to Mr. Horton's representatives talking about what they want to do, and I understand that that's what they do. They're developers. They're the largest developer in the country, and that's great. That's really great for them. And, you know, we've had Facebook come here. And they've done a lot for the community, and I think that's great, too. Um, and there's been a lot of negative comments about that. And I find it interesting that they're, all, they're here tonight to talk about who they are, which is great. I wish they'd have done that two years ago or a year ago. Um, so they talked about the park that they would help build across the street from the development, which is the uh, boat launching rock. Uh, area. My experience in the past has been that um, I used, I've taken my grandchildren down there to play at the playground. My husband and I went down there to take the kids down to swing on the swings and there wasn't a swing set anymore. The city had taken it away. No reason. They just took it. Uh, the bathrooms, well, whew, if you went in there, you would you needed to get a, a tetanus shot because the people that came there destroyed that bathroom. It was nasty, and it had to be torn down. My question is, build a pretty thing, but who's going to take care of it? I guarantee you there's going to be problems. So I want to take you on up Lock 4 Road. As you come up Lock 4 Road from the gates where the cattle gates are on the left and the, and the boat ramp uh, entrance, you start up the road, and there's no shoulder on the right side of the road. That's all Corps of Engineers property. So you have nowhere to go. So you go up, and a young man came before you and talked about the accident he had. Well, I can tell you about the people that have landed in my front yard <coughs> several times, going too fast on Lock 4 Road and lost control. And it, 
it, it was so bad that it, it, if he had gone any further, he'd been in my bedroom in the front of the house. And it was drunk drivers, but still, I live on lock four every day. I go out on my porch, I go in my driveway, I can't even talk on my phone because of the traffic, the noise from the trucks, the, the loud trucks, the cars, there's no noise reduction out there. I've tried everything I know other than building a Berlin Wall like my neighbor did in front of my house so that I can't hear anything. It's dangerous. I'm afraid when I get out of my driveway that I'm gonna get hit because I do everything I can to look back and forth, but the cars come flying up over the hill where they wanna put the entrance to, uh, across from Aqua Drive, and they fly over that hill and they, they have no time to slow down. I've had almost been rear-ended multiple times by people speeding on Lot 4 Road. We don't have supervision out there with speeding. Safety issue, that's a big safety issue. The next thing I wanna tell you is I took a trip out on the farm. And I've been on that farm before, but I took a really long trip and went all over the property. I thought, wow, this is not as big as I thought it was. I know it's 200 and some odd acres, but most of this is rock. It's slab rock all the way. There's mud, and it, but the mud is very thin, and it's water everywhere sitting out because of all the aquifers. The cattle are out there. You're going to have to scrape all that dirt off, blast through the rock, and guess what? When you blast through the rock, I'm going to feel it at my house. Are you going to guarantee me that you're not, are you're going to pay for my windows when they get cracked? My foundation gets cracked from the dynamiting? It's going to happen to all my neighbors. Everybody down my street, Lock 4, Peach Valley, Nichols Lane. I, I don't know what else to tell you, but please, common sense is common. It should be. And so... Think about the land. I've talked to you about the history, the slave graves. I've talked to you about the traffic. I've talked to you about the dynamiting. I've talked to you about the safety, the lack of supervision of safety. I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Other, and I've talked to you about the environment. We have so much wildlife out there. Okay, great. So they are in my yard. I don't like, I don't mind them. I love them. Where are they going to go? You got Kirkpatrick now who wants to build, because I understand that there may be a, there is a buyer for that, maybe. I mean, Peach Valley is not that wide either. They're, they speed and they fly up and down Peach Valley Road. They come around where the Aw Daddies is. When you come out of Aw Daddies, it, you may as well just put your helmet on because you don't know what's coming over that other hill. So. Why are we putting all these houses in a little bitty area because we can? I don't get it. We're gonna have rooftops over rooftops over rooftops. No longer will we have a forest. No longer will we have the trees out there that actually help you breathe. And we're gonna have rooftops. That's what comes off of rooftops is dirt. Oil comes from the streets. It goes into the aquifers. It goes into the lake. We already have a f dirty lake. I don't swim in the lake. I know what's in there. It's nasty. And what comes down Lakeshore Drive when the, when the pumping station overflows, the poop goes in the water. I don't want to be swimming in poop. I've told you all this. The, and we talk about traffic. Oh, my God. You know, I'm serious. It's like living next to 386 on my front porch. I, I, I encourage any of you to come out to my house, sit in my porch swing, and watch what I go through every day with the traffic, the speeding, the loud cars. At night, I constantly hear it. It's constant. Then I have all daddies who's got the bands playing late at night. The music, I can hear it in my house. I don't complain. I know people want to have fun and enjoy it. Great. But when you start adding all these people and all of this other stuff in, in the water, all the Botox, 
Is that me? Okay. I could go on for till midnight, I'm sorry, but I'm very passionate about this. I love my community. I love Gallatin. I just don't get it. I, I, I've tried. I've rallied. I've done everything I know. I even ran for office, which was, I don't know about that. But I ran for office because I didn't like what I saw. And I know it's going to be a huge burden on the county when we have to build all these schools. And that's going to mean your taxes are going to go up. Some of you can afford your taxes. Some, I know a lot of people who can't. And so we have to think of the big picture. You have a civil engineer who comes up here and explains to you what's wrong with this project. You have all these other people that have come up here before you. And I want to thank everybody that's come for the, as long as they've come and endured this. I want to thank everybody because it's not something you want to do as part of your life to fight for what you have. I mean, I, I worked my blank off my all my life to have what I have. But for you to come in and change the character, but you because you can and you don't want to hear the voices of the people, that isn't right. It's wrong. And I encourage you to rethink what you're doing because it's not, I've told you this before. It's not the banks of Lock Fort plus Kirkpatrick, plus the, the building development they're going to do on Nichols Lane that you haven't talked about, plus Peach Valley. I mean, Woods Ferry is a nightmare. I went out there. Those people are being terrorized by the dynamiting and all that's going out on there, and that is a narrow road. I don't know whoever thought of that was going to be okay for these people to drive out onto that little tiny road and it was going to be safe. That was, that's insane. And that's an example of why we need to be careful. You owe it to your constituents, all of you, to think about their safety, to think about the harm this is going to cause to them, and what you can do to change that. And I please ask that you hear us and listen to us. I'm not going to go on anymore. I'm going to quit. But I want to thank you all for at least listening tonight. And I want to thank, I know it's hard for what you do. I really do. I could say a lot of things. I've got a lot of things in my pocket that I could present that I know about, but I won't do that because I'm not that type of person. But I do want you to know that this is important to us, and please, please listen to us, and I thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Councilman. I am Jeff Hebb. I live at 172 Cavalcade Loop. Gallatin, Tennessee, and I am blessed to be the CEO of Sumner Realtors. We've got a membership of over a thousand realtors and real estate professionals serving Sumner and Macon County, and our members are here to help consumers in our community uh, find the American dream of home ownership. But housing across the country is our number one issue. We're about 5.5 million units short of housing all across the country. Lot 4 and DR Horton will help with some of that much needed housing. We've also seen in recent years where people working remotely, uh, more and more is becoming a fad or a thing that they can do. And the value of the homes we offer here versus some of the larger metros, that option will be valuable uh, and important to them. And as you all well know, any housing development is more than a builder and a developer. It takes the city, it takes entities, businesses, organizations to all work together in the community to, con to implement the development, but also to continue to help the community thrive where people want to live. I am thankful to see one of our past presidents, Tammy Chambers, here speaking. She's helping the DR Hortons team, and I've had the privilege of getting to know some of the DR Horton members, Patrick and Brandon and Danny and uh, Sydney and Ashley and more, so I'm so thankful to get to know them more. Mayor and city council members, I want to thank you for considering this opportunity that I believe helps provide much needed housing in a wonderful community like Gallatin, Tennessee. Thank you so very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jimmy Overton. I live in 901 Lakeview Court. Thank you all for what you do. I know how hard it is. I was in your seat for some 16 years and I appreciate what you do. I live on Lock 4. I look out my kitchen window and I see this development. I see all the cows 
roaming on it, the deer roaming on it, the salamanders. And I'm like some other neighbors. I would love to see that for the rest of my life. But guess what? It's not reality. It can't happen unless you want to buy it. You want to go buy the property, you can do whatever you want to do with it. But since you can't, if you can't afford to buy it, then they have a right to do what they want to do with it. But I want to thank you all for what you've done. Some people said that this has been rushed through. Let me tell you something. Almost five years ago, I had a representative come to me that wanted to talk to me about this. They want to put 1,100 houses on this piece of property. I said, no way possible. But thanks to you all, to many of you on here, you've held your feet to the fire. It went from 1,100 to 900 to 800 to 760 or 770, and now they got it down in the 600s. Thank you for what you've done. Not only that, but thank you for making them do the offsite improvements. Most developers don't do that for us. I mean, if you remember when Windsong Development was built, we had this room full just like it is right now. Nobody was gonna, nobody was gonna go to Windsong Development. They were all against it. Uh, but guess what? This development is full. The retail's full. The townhomes are full. This is a beautiful development for our city. Something we can all be proud of. And I think everybody in this room probably shops in that development, in, that, in Windsong. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you for holding their feet to the fire and asking this developer to do these offsite improvements, to finish in front of the fire hall, in front of the church, to finish building out this, that side of Clear Lake Meadows. Because you're right, Tommy Garrett, uh, as you know, his daughter was just up here speaking. 18 years ago, he sat down in my living room and he begged me and said, the only thing that I really ask you to do is be sure that Clear Lake Meadows gets built. And I fought every single day to be sure that we made any developer that built back through there off of Clear Lake Meadows. And at the time, Clear Lake Meadows wasn't even a city road. Back then, it was still a developer road. We had to cut a deal with the developer so it would become a city road. But we've done everything we can, and we made, this, we made Mr. Durham that built the townhomes. We made him build his part of the thoroughfare that's going through the Clear Lake Meadows. But thank you all for what you've done to force this developer and ask this developer to do the offsite improvements, to make the improvements on Lock 4 at Hancock Street. Look, I've lived on Lock 4 in two different houses for over 40 years, and they pass my house every single day. But we don't have any problems except for when you get to Nichols Lane and you get to Hancock Street, that's where all the problems are. But it's because you get people from Wilson County and everywhere else that cuts through Nichols Lane and comes to, comes to the city of Galton, goes to Vols State or goes wherever they're going. But this developer's agreed to work with our engineering department and do whatever they have to do to make it a better intersection at Hancock Street. They've agreed to make the improvements and do the Clear Lake Meadows Boulevard. But they've done it because of you all asking them and holding their feet to the fire. Thank you for getting it down to 2.2 .2 units an acre. When, like I said, when they started out, it was 1,100 houses. And you know there's no way we're gonna put up with that. So thank you for what you all have done. I know it's hard, I've been in your seats, but thank you for what you've done. Good evening, I'm Sherry Alexander. I live at 217 Strange Circle. And I think for me, the, the heart of it all is all of the development in Gallatin. <clears throat> we still have thousands and thousands of units that have been okayed on master plans that have not been built. We do not know exactly how all of that is going to affect Gallatin, but yet we're looking at putting more property or more houses on a property that we know that there's gonna be issues. For me, when I look at the thought of, of fixing the roads, that disrupts more of our citizens. The people that live up and down that street, there's no way to make lock four bigger unless you take front yards. And I'm sure part of that's right away is already, but it still makes my yard smaller. Um, but why can't we just say wait? Why can't we say, we don't have to say yes or no. Why can't we say wait? Let's wait and see what all of this hap what all of the developments that are already proposed, that are already okayed, um, have to do with our development or our infrastructure. I love Gallatin. I chose to move here. 
and I understand that people want to move here, but I don't think that people want to move here because it's doubled in size in such a short amount of time. They want to move here because it's a because of the character in the out in the outskirts of Gallatin. Please be careful. Let's just what, let's let's just let's just stop and look at what we've got going and see what we can do. Thank you. Rhonda Harris, 1124 Belvedere Drive. I've debated on whether or not to say anything tonight, but just before I came over here, right before I came over here, I looked out my front door and there was my neighbor's little girl across the street and she was outside literally jumping in the same little like water puddle area where my daughter did 30 years ago. And my, I mean, of course, we've all traffic, traffic, traffic. We know that it's an issue. But what my frustration is, is that I got a letter because of all that traffic study that was in our neighborhood, all the speed bumps, all the little circles, and now it has dropped. And we stood out there. I stood out there with Bo, her dad. I was watching this direction for traffic, and we were watching as cars, y'all, they fly through. They're flying up and down lock four. They're flying through that three-way stop. Nothing is being done about it, and that's our frustration, is you get stuff going, and then things just drop, you know? And nothing has been done about that whole neighborhood situation over there, and my concern is that nothing's gonna happen with Lock 4 either. The subdivision is gonna go in. The, the gentleman that spoke earlier that's representing the, the builder, you know, I, I just don't believe that anything is gonna get done about it. The, the subdivision's gonna go in and we're gonna have those issues. So I want to see that you all are actually gonna follow through. I would like, you know, some more communication about that because the last letter that was sent to us was that there was supposedly some group that was gonna be doing a study, a further study on that. You know, I mean, that subdivision has completely changed, just like it's going to continue the way it is. So, and that's what our frustrations are, and that's what our concerns are. So, thank you. Hello, um, Linda Marandino, 1092 Lock Fort Road. I also was not going to come up and speak tonight because everything has been said and said and said over. But then Mr. Overton came up and he lives right down the block from me and he says, there's no problem at all. There is a problem. Lock 4 Road is like being on a racetrack. And when I have friends come over to the house, I will stand out there with them and go, either say to them, look, look, and look again, or you're going to get killed or I stand out on the road and go, okay, go, and try to get them out of my driveway so they don't get hurt. Um, not against development. Um, Orton and his group have been up here with their fans, let us know how great they are, that's fine. They're a developer. I don't mind neighbors. I like the neighbors I have. I would welcome new neighbors, just not too many. The infrastructure won't support it. Over and over again, we tell everybody it's not going to support it. It's not. It's just too packed in of an area. It's almost like when you say you're landlocked, it's, it's locked. It's a peninsula down Lock 4 Road. There's only so many ways in and out. And the roads are country roads. It just doesn't support it. And unless Horton puts in the new infrastructure and pays for it, then the tax people, are, we're all going to get stuck paying for it, along with the schools and the fire department, and more police. We are going to need them, and we're going to get stuck paying for all of it. If we're going to put them in, let's keep it to a lower amount that we can handle and that we don't all get stuck paying for, along with the rest of the counties paying for all the schools. Thank you. Good evening, City Council member, Mayor. My name is John Dowell. I live at 1006 Frontage Road. And I must say I have got a real good education tonight on city government and how things are being done. 
I would like to say this. I'm familiar with the Nexus Project. I've been through there, been visiting, uh, went through there, along Four Road, have friends, relatives out there. And I've been in Gallatin ever since some of you may remember when they called it Gracious and Growing Gallatin. So now we're actually right now in a part where I think uh, from listening to the developer and listening to the citizens, basically if you could trim it down just a little bit because some of these areas that I've been in, it's pretty rough. I mean, kids can't really play like we used to play in the streets. I mean, I'm 65 years old, and when I grew up off of Long Hollow Pike, it was just an old two-lane highway. We know what Long Hollow Pike is now. And out on Peach Valley Road, uh, the friends that I have out there when visiting them, there's a lot of traffic that cuts through from Wilson County. And even over on Beverdeer, I have some more friends uh, farther on out. And uh, sometimes I like to take my grandkids out to the lake or go to the park, go walking out there, just enjoying it. And some of the things I see in Gallatin now, even like just coming from Hardy's in the morning, I've actually had to wait from Save a Lot almost to get through the square. Traffic is, and y'all know it already. One thing I would ask in the developer, maybe there's some compromise that they could do to the city council. You know, people elect you all to do what y'all feels best interest for the city. However, sometimes things are hard, things are tough. Right now, we're in a situation where Gallatin needs some more infrastructure. If you look around, some of the areas are getting neglected and some of the areas are being bombarded. So tonight, to the council and to all the citizens that have come up tonight, thank you for this opportunity. Okay, well, almost. Well, look there. <laughs> Good evening, Council. My name is Bill McCord, William D. McCord, at uh, 921 Belvedere Drive, uh, city resident and uh, also resident in District 3. Uh, the City Council adopted a comprehensive plan for the city and uh, went through quite a few iterations. Uh, to finally achieve that and adopted the first plan. So there is a plan for development of, of the city. I understand that not, not everyone is going to agree with the plan that is adopted, but it is a plan and it is the blueprint that uh, both people who do agree with it and don't agree with it need to understand that that is the blueprint for the city. Uh, I'm familiar with the development process in the city and how this prog project has progressed very slowly including even before the comp plan was adopted uh, and, and amended as well. Uh, I'll remind you, before uh, the city had a comp plan that was adopted by the Planning Commission and had this property tagged for a much higher intensity and density than what's on that property under the current comp plan. So it is a reduction quite a bit from what we had assigned to the property. <laughs> Uh, I'm very confident in the capability of the city uh, staff to marshal whatever plan is adopted in, in cohorts with this zoning and to ensure that those public improvements uh, as well as private improvements are constructed on a schedule that it's necessary to serve the citizens not only of this development but for the rest of the city as well. Uh, Middle Tennessee is growing, growing rapidly. The cost of housing is far outstretched the ability for most people and how, uh, household types in, in particular to be able to achieve that housing. Uh, we heard testimony tonight that uh, um, uh, there's a great shortage for housing and it's not just in Middle Tennessee, it's in, in many growing markets. Uh, it is important for the city to be able to achieve opportunities for uh, families and individuals to live in this city if that's what they want to do. It's also important that the city provide housing types and affordable housing for the types of jobs that are being created here in this city, that are being recruited to this city. Uh, I live in a neighborhood that has a density of just a little over two units per acre. And those are fairly large size lots. Uh, it would have been a nice to have that neighborhood developed it was developed over 60 years ago, but to have it developed where there were open space tracks available for common use and or for stormwater facilities. All of these things are going to be accomplished 
and the stormwater facilities, the water quality is all going to be taken care of. The traffic volumes on these roadways is not going to uh, create level of service problems. And we, the, that is, seems to be a big problem with uh, a lot of the folks that uh, get up here and speak, is that their measuring sticks are all different. So I realize the city has not adopted a measuring uh, stick or a level of service for traffic volume, but I guarantee that most of the folks would uh, agree that uh, traffic became a problem the, the, the day after they moved into their home. And so I, I, many of the folks here, I've uh, probably traveled right by my house every day because they find it more convenient to use my uh, local street that I live on than to use a collector roadway because of their uncomfortable uh, uh, use of the roadway and, and traffic volumes at certain times of the day. So uh, I hope the council will, uh, I know you got a tough job and it's difficult to go against what is a majority that may show up here and speak about or against a project, but you do have a comp plan. I think it's important to stick by it. Uh, the density out there, that is quite low density in particular in comparison to a lot of the other larger projects that have been approved in the city. And again, uh, the transportation system is all part of that comp plan as well. And so if you stick by the comp plan, you implement those things, you're going to have success. And yes, it is important that city of Gallatin grow. It's great to have new neighbors. These are going to be neighbors investing in your community. They are new just like everyone in here has been new to this community at one time or another. And I hope that you welcome them. I hope this project gets completed. And I hope that all of you welcome your new neighbors when they do. Thank you very much. Good evening, Michelle Juvance, 1335 Long Hollow Pike. I was absolutely not gonna say anything tonight until we had our uh, previous city planner that just spoke, who just recently retired. Um, and it just re really, really makes me angry when this comp plan is talked about because Plan Gallatin was something that I was, um, as a citizen, engaged with from the very beginning. I did all of the surveys that we were asked to do. I went to all the meetings. I was very involved. Just waiting for you. Thanks. Um, and what I know about that comp plan is that it does not represent what the citizens wanted. It does not represent what the citizens put in the surveys that they did, because I've seen the comments before it was scrubbed and sent over to the GNRC and changed. So our previous planner has been a really good salesman for the developers, and he's a really good salesman at trying Please to... Please don't disparage our former employee. I don't think that's appropriate. It's not disparaging to call someone a good salesperson. It's actually just a fact. And it's what he did, and I watched him do it since 2017. Um, so when he's coming here and doing that again, I, I don't understand it. Because the comp plan actually had this as rural. Until it was changed. Because Jimmy Overton asked for it to be changed and he was also Ma here. Please do not reference individuals. Thank you. Okay. Um, And I did go to those meetings that happened at the Planning Commission when it was changed. And uh, it was not accurately represented to the Planning Commission what was asked for by a certain city council person who asked it to be sent back and changed. Um, that certain city council person. Point of order, please. This public hearing on the... 
what now? Public hearing on the log four note on the complaint. All right. So anyway, I guess I'll uh, just say that I'm opposed to the character of this um, proposed development. I don't think it suits the, the area. And um, it's pretty clear. I think you all know that. Thank you. I see no one else standing up indicating that they wish to speak, so I'm going to, <laughs> police officer just stood up in the back of the room, I was about to go, oh, wait, yeah, wait, did you want to speak? Um, so I'm going to declare a public hearing on ordinance 02402-8 closed, and while I do hate to prolong this meeting, I am going to declare a recess for seven minutes. We will reconvene at 8.03. Going to reconvene this meeting and we will begin with item number two, which is dangerous building complaint and show calls hearing on 518 Red River Road. Um, for that, I will introduce Ms. Tom McCauley and Mr. Durflinger. Good afternoon, Council. Charles Durflinger with the Building Codes. Um, the first property I brought up to you tonight for 518 Red River Road. We've gotten conflicting, got a second engineering report that conflicts the first one. The building official is requiring a third independent um, engineering report to be submitted within 30 days. So we're asking for a continuance until May 7th, till May 7th for that property. Second. I mean, continue. continue. May 7th. May 7th. A motion to continue until May 7th by Councilman Hayes, second by Councilman Fennell. Any questions, any discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor of continuing the show, uh, the show calls hearing for 518 Red River Road to May 7th, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Does pass unanimously. Item number three is the dangerous building complaint and show calls hearing for 507 Carson Street. Ms. Hamakali, Mr. Durflinger. Yes, ma'am. Charles Sturfling with Building Codes again. Um, Mr. Dow, the owner of the property, is present. If he'd like to come forward. Oh, here he is. Um, Mr. Dow has already procured his demolition permit for the property, and it's good to go on that. Um, he's planning on uh, demolishing the uh, building starting about mid-month of this month. Mr. Dow? He just, I'll go with what he said. I second it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for doing that. I think Ms. Hamakali may advise that we go ahead and declare it. And then or that, or you can continue it for until May 7th. Do, and do, do that. Kind of see what the progress Motion is at that point. Say again. Second. Thank you. Motion by Councilman Hayes to continue to May 7th. Second by um, Councilwoman George. Are there any questions, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Okay, passes unanimously. Item number four, second reading on ordinance 02402-12. Councilman Hayes, you Yeah, this is an ordinance of the city of Gallatin, Tennessee, rezoning 14.057 acres from the CG Commercial General District to MRO Multiple Residential and Office District. And let's see, 14.293 acres from the PGC Plan General Commercial District to the MRO Multiple Residential and Office District with a preliminary master development plan for Gallatin Gap on two parcels totaling 35.01 acres located north of National Pike and west of Harris Lane, authorizing the revision to be indicated on the official zoning atlas, repealing conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Councilman Hayes, a second by Councilwoman George, opening the floor for discussion. Mr. Jumons. Thank you, Mayor. Um, like I said before, I don't think it's the right time for the development. Uh, in a couple of square miles around the property, we have almost 2,500 units already approved or to be constructed or going to be rental. So, um, I have nothing in that development, but I don't think the right time, so I'll be voting no. Anyone else with any comments? Are you ready to vote? 
Okay, this is second reading on ordinance 02402-12. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. No. Passes five to one. Item number five is second reading on ordinance 02403-14. Councilman Fennell. Thank you, Mayor. This is an ordinance amending Gallatin Municipal Code Chapter 5 Buildings and Building Regulations by adopting the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code with amendments per state requirements. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Councilman Fennell, second by Councilman Carter. Are there any questions? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, this is second reading on ordinance 02403-14. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. Passes 6-0. Item six is second reading on ordinance 02403-15. And Vice Mayor Love's absence, would you like to take this, Councilman Carter? Yes, ma'am, I sure will, thank you. This is an ordinance awarding bid and authorizing funds in the total amount of $330,000 from water sewer 2021 bond sales for the Franklin Street Water Line Replacement Project, Contract 224. Uh, motion to send it on, motion to approve. Second. Motion by Councilman Carter, second by Councilman Juvance. Are there any questions? Is there any discussion? Okay, this is second reading on Ordinance 02403-15. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. <laughs> Passes unanimously, 6-0. Item seven is first reading on Ordinance 02403-16. Councilman Carter. This is an ordinance awarding bid and authorizing funds in the total amount of $5,800,000 from water sewer to 2021 bond sales for the east side water transmission mains project, contract two, uh, 324. Motion to send it on. Okay. To approve, sorry. <laughs> Well, in a meeting, a <laughs> work session. Okay, um, um, motion by Councilman Carter. Second. Second by Councilwoman George, opening the floor for discussion and questions. Mr. Johns. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just have a couple of questions. I read, I read the description. Uh, thanks, thanks, David, for putting that together. Um, on the loop, uh, Asheville Park, Airport Road, and Cairo Road, um, where does that stop on Cable Road? And so we can have David up there, please. A motion to suspend the rules and invite Mr. Kellogg up. Anyone? Oh, well, motion to suspend Thank the rules. Thank you, Second. Councilman Carter. Second, Councilman Juvance. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Question was where does Cairo Road, the loop there, I think, end. Was that correct? What you yes, ma'am. I've stopped at the intersection of Cairo Road and. It'll be Airport Road, uh, Air Cairo Road intersection down to Airport Road, or Cairo and Hartsville Pike. So it'll make that little loop and we'll push all that into the highest Thank pressure you. zone. And I apologize to put you on the spot. I just read that really late so I didn't have time to call you. Um, and the other one, I have a Concern too is the comment um, that we're going to connect between two developer install uh, section, um, and I was wondering why would we pay for that if it's uh, the developer is supposed to connect, supposed to pay for connection. What what we would have to spend money just to. So developer connecting on either end, uh, one developer connects onto an existing stub out for a 20 inch line uh, that was put in 20 years ago for a future loop around the west side of Gallatin. We've required developer to put in a section to the creek. Another developer has come in, we've had him tie in on the other side. The next developer will tie in. So it's a, it's a gap piece. Um, that we didn't feel like it was necessary for the developers to put in. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. One else? Okay, this is first reading on ordinance 02403-16. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Passes unanimously, 6-0. Item eight is resolution R2403-20, Councilwoman George. Thank you, Mayor. This is a resolution authorizing the mayor to sign a joint, joinder agreement to a master sub, sub, 
subscription and license agreement between the City of Goodlesville and ESO Solutions, Incorporated. I so move. Second. Motion by Councilwoman George, second by Councilman Juvon. So are there any questions, any discussion? Okay, if not, this is resolution R2403-20. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Passes six to zero <laughs> unanimously. Item nine is resolution R2403-23. Councilman Juvon. Thank you, Mayor. And it's a resolution authorizing the Gallatin Police Department to apply for the AKC reunion, adopt a K9 cup and motion to approve. Second. Motion by Councilman Juvant, second by Councilman Carter. Any questions? Any discussion? Cup grant. I forgot huh? the grant. I forgot the grant. A cup grant. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my brain has. Um, um, Turned down a notch or two this evening, I think. Um, okay, so resolution R2403-23, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Passes unanimously. I thought you were saying I had left a word out and I couldn't understand. I'm sorry. All right, that concludes the regular agenda. It brings us to other business. I did fail to mention at the beginning of the meeting, again, not to prolong it, but um, certainly want to recognize those who received awards at the Gallatin Police Department Awards Banquet. Last week, um, very nice job done with that banquet. Um, best ever, so my compliments to the Gallatin Police Department. And congratulations to all the winners. The Officer of the Year was Kezia Oaks, and so congratulations to her. And then on Friday, we had graduation at the Gallatin Fire Department with eight, seven, eight, eight new recruits. And so congratulations to them. and. And they came in with some really high praise from the people that had trained them. So look forward to having them around the city of Gallatin in the days ahead. So that's all I have for other business. I would ask Councilman Carter. Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank everybody that um, played a role in making the extravaganza 2024 a great success. Um, there were Chief Beeman was there, several officers from GPD. We also had some officers from the fire department. Um, there were people here from Codes. The mayor was there. Sean was there. Who else? Chuck Stewart. Chuck Stewart. Yeah, Chuck Stewart. Yeah, Chuck Stewart was there and Ben Harris. And thank you, Jimmy, for coming by as well. Thank you, Mayor. We talked about it last week. Um, I would just wanted to know if you got the uh, the appraisal uh, for. The soccer field, like we talked last week. Yeah, there, no? I, I checked with uh, Mr. Tuttle, and we we're having to wait on another public entity before we can proceed. But we will keep working on it. Waiting on the what? Another public entity. Gotcha. Okay. Because so, part, part of the property would belong to as part of another project. So. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Anyone else with other business? All right, we'll move on to public recognition on non-agenda related items. We've still got a full house out there. I'm sure you're gonna line up 24 deep and a lot of people are gonna speak under, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, if anyone would like to speak, uh, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown would like to speak. I'd like to give you an update on the Clearview project. It's moving well, we looked at the building and the plans and the floor plans. And saying that, the, the playground at Clearview, we'll be, we're going to be taking it out where the building is going, plus some of it's been declared unsafe or the age of it. And along with that one, also at Triple Creek Park, we have one of us, 28 year old, I think, somewhere in there that we we're gonna be taking out to. It's it's above the Miracle Park, but it's, it's kind of, it's, it's served its purpose too. So if you hear anybody say anything about two playgrounds going out, that's what it is. Quickly. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. Anyone in the public wishing to speak under public comment for non-agenda related items? I see no one. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Councilman Carter, second by Councilwoman George. 
Thank you all for being patient, generous with your time, department heads, and, and the public who are here this evening. Hope you have a lovely evening and a great rest of the week, and I think we are very blessed to have escaped very bad weather, and may our prayers remain with those who have suffered damage today. Good night, all. <laughs>